All right, I'm gonna do a quick video on installing the push rods, guide plates, rockers, and then setting the lash on the rockers. So this is a hydraulic roller, big block, Gen 6, 454. And <clears throat> try and keep this short. So basically the heads are the stock iron heads. I had a machine shop go through them, put new seals and everything in, and then I had them drill for 7 16 studs. The factory ones are 3 8 stud, they're just smaller, these are stronger. So they drilled and tapped those for 7 16 and the 7 16 stud is ARP 1357101. So you just put those in, torque them to 55 foot pounds. Next, I've got new push rods, which I had to measure for, and I measured using one of these measured, you know, push rod length checking tools and also measuring, you know, lining up a rocker at 90 degrees and counting the threads and whatnot. There's, there's people that do a great job of explaining that in detail on YouTube and other videos, so you can look up one of those. But I measured for all these. Every motor can be a little different, but what I came up with for my motor was 7.575 on the intake is the length and 8.550 for the exhaust. So those are the lengths I needed. Uh, stock push rods are a 5 16th. The new ones are 3 8 So you can see they're quite a bit thicker. A thicker push rod requires a guide plate with a bigger hole in it. So these guide plates are comp 4806-8, and you can see it says 3 8 on there. So these are for 3 8 They're not adjustable. So you just stick them on there, put your studs in, torque them down, and then your push rods just slide in. Now for these push rods, look what it says right on the inside of the box. All push rods actually, they have a hole in them. And you need to be able to make sure that you can see through that hole and there's no debris in there. So just spray some carb cleaner through these things and then blow them out with compressed air. And make sure that passage is nice and clean in all of them. It's pretty simple up to this point. Push rods, guide plates, studs. Uh, to set the rockers on, I just put a little touch of oil on top of each valve stem and the rockers just set on one by one. These rockers are just a Summit brand rocker in the stock 1.7 ratio. And the part number for that is here. These roller rockers, we just want to clean them, make sure the rollers spin nice and freely, and then make sure these trunnion bearings spin freely. And when you install them, this trunnion bearing in here it has a flat surface and a rounded surface. So you just want to make sure the rounded surface goes down and the flat surface goes up because the nut is flat and the nut has to ride on that flat surface, just like that. All the rockers are on, so next you're going to thread the nuts on, just finger tight. You don't want to tighten them down at all, just get them started. So this is my attempt at explaining what it means to get a lifter on the base circle of the cam. So this is a camshaft. The camshaft has these lobes on it. See what they look like? And so if a lifter is riding on that lobe, when that cam comes around, that lobe that tall pointed part of the lobe is gonna push the lifter up in the air. See, up it goes. Now it's riding on top of that lobe. And then when the cam keeps turning, it's gonna come down the other side and land back at the bottom, which is basically what's called the base circle of the cam. Right there at the bottom, on the opposite side of the bump, is the base circle. So when we adjust a valve, my crude drawing. We don't want the lifter sitting up at the top of the lobe, pushed up, and we don't want it halfway down. We want the lifter as far down in the bore as possible. And so that means we want that cam load to be pointing down and we want the lifter sitting on the base circle. That's where we want to set these things to adjust the valves properly. Why do we want to adjust valves with the lifter sitting all the way at the bottom of the cam? Well, if you look at this lifter, for example, is sticking up, which means it's putting pressure on the push rod, 
which is putting pressure on the rocker, which is pushing that spring down. So you're gonna have a lot of spring tension on this, this rocker if it's pushing down. If you take a look at this lifter, this one's all the way at the bottom, which means it's not exerting any pressure on this rod, which means it's not exerting any pressure on the rocker, which means it's not pushing down that spring at all. So this is in kind of a neutral setting right here. There's no excessive pressure or stress on this rocker. It's just sitting neutral when that lifter is on the base circle of the cam. So that's where we want to adjust the preload is when it's in a neutral position, not when it's got tension on it from this spring. So how do I know when my lifter is sitting on the base circle of the cam? Well, I'll show you how to find that. We're gonna do one cylinder at a time, and we're gonna start by watching the exhaust valve. So this is the exhaust valve, this is the intake valve. That exhaust valve is gonna open all the way, and then it's gonna close, but right before it gets finished closing, the intake valve is gonna to start to open. They call that valve overlap, because the intake valve overlaps the exhaust by a little bit. So we're gonna watch that while we turn the motor over. Watch that exhaust valve on the right. Okay, it's opening. And now it's closing. And just before it's finished, the intake valve is going to start right there. So the intake valve just started opening. Now we're in valve overlap on cylinder number one. So that means we can adjust, we can't adjust cylinder number one, we can adjust its opposite cylinder and have a chart that shows you what the opposite cylinders are right here. So when you have cylinder number one on that valve overlap condition, that means cylinder number six, both valves are completely closed, which means both lifters are sitting on the base circle of the cam for cylinder number six. So we can adjust cylinder number six right now. Now, if we look at cylinder number six, you can see that both those lifters are all the way at the bottom compared to one like cylinder number eight where one of them's open and one's closed. These are both down. So that's where we want them to be able to adjust those rockers. So when we say that we're gonna adjust a lifter or adjust valve lash or adjust lifter preload, it's all the same thing. What are we actually adjusting? What are we going for here? And what's that adjustment? What's the purpose of that adjustment? Well, if you look at this lifter, it's got a spring in there. There's some springiness there. And so that lifter is going to fill with oil and it's going to self-adjust. But what we want is when we install this thing, we don't want the lifter riding all the way at the top so it hits that little clip. See that little retainer clip at the top? We don't want it to hit that when it's all the way up. So what we're going to do is tighten the rocker arm down just about this much to make it so that that's the top of the travel for the lifter. Just a little bit of preload on that spring. It still has plenty of spring left down in there that it can adjust, but it's just not riding up against that clip. We just turn it about three quarters of a turn right there so that we have a few thousands clearance between the top of the lifter and that, that clip. That's what lifter preload is. Some people call that setting your valve lash, but on a hydraulic lifter, that's what it is. Solid lifters are different because they don't have any spring. So for those, you just set with a feeler gauge at the tip of the roller on the rocker. But for a hydraulic lifter, it's got this spring in it and you need to have a little bit of preload on it. Here we go, we're gonna adjust number six. So the first step is make sure the push rod is sitting right in the center of the lifter, obviously, in the same center on the ro rocker arm. And we need to get all this, this looseness out of here. So I'm just going to tighten this nut down just finger tight till that lash goes away. Right there. No up and down movement. Same on this one. See there's a bunch of up and down movement. Just want to tighten this till that up and down movement goes away. Right there. So literally no tension at all. I'm just taking that lash out. Okay, so push rod in the center of the lifter, push rod in the center of the lifter, push rod in the center of the rocker, center of the rocker. I'm good there. Don't worry about side to side movement. It doesn't matter. Just want to make sure your up and down movement is gone. When you reach that point, 
Then we turn this three quarters of a turn. Some people say half turn. Just to be safe, I'm gonna go three quarters. So that's from here to right there. About here. Okay, now let's check. All right, we're gonna check that number six. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's not easy filming YouTube videos. I'm learning that the hard way. I spent 15 minutes trying to move things around and set everything up and try to get the lighting just right, just to film three seconds worth of video. Okay, so on this one, we can see we still got some springy movement, but that does not hit that little brass colored clip. It's down a little bit from it. So that one looks great. And this one, if we can get the camera in the right place. Same thing. We can see we got a little bit of clearance there, but still plenty of springiness for it to adjust itself. So that's perfect. That's what we're looking for. And I don't know if you noticed, when I was turning the socket on this, I wasn't cranking hard on that. I barely had to turn this at all. It actually feels too loose, but it's got the right preload on it. So now we just turn these locking nuts inside there to crank those down tight and we should be in good shape. Now the way these rocker nuts work is each one has a little set screw that goes inside and that's just an Allen key. So you screw this down to get the adjustment that you want and then you tighten this nut up in that position and it'll bottom out against the top of the rocker stud and you just crank that real tight and it'll put some stress on these threads and then it'll hold that nut in place. That's how that works. So I'm just gonna snug down the locking screws on these two for right now. I'm not gonna crank them tight yet. Cause I wanna go back through and double check all these, check that preload when I'm all done just to make double sure set where I want it. So I'm just gonna snug those a little bit. I'm gonna move on and adjust the rest of them. So now I'm gonna move on to cylinder number eight. I'm gonna turn the motor over and watch the exhaust valve open and then close and then watch the intake valve just start to open on cylinder number eight. And then I'm gonna set the valves on five. And then I'll adjust four and set seven, and adjust three and set two, and just keep going down the list until we're all done. Moving on to number eight, you can see the exhaust valve is already open all the way there, so I shouldn't have to move this very far. Crank the motor over, watch for the intake valve to start to open. Right there. Okay. So the intake valve just started to open. So now I can do number five. Yeah, I followed the order and I've got these all set, all adjusted now. So now what I'm gonna do is repeat the process. I'm gonna go back to number one, you know, turn the engine over until I see the exhaust open and, and then close and then see the intake just start to open on number one. Then I'm gonna check number six and just double check to make sure that the lifter has the right amount of preload. Then I'm going to go through all of them and check them all just to double check. <clears throat> okay, I went back through the sequence and double checked all these. And it's kind of hard to see, but I can see that there's good preload on all those. They're, the top of the lifter is not touching that brass clip on any of these all the way across. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten those lock nuts. All right, that's it. These valves are all done, all adjusted. Preload looks correct on all of them and the locks are all tightened down. So the next step is I'm gonna get my pre-lube tool, stick it down in that distributor hole, 
fill the oil pan with oil and I'm gonna use a drill and spin that thing and just watch all these and make sure oil is coming up through all of them, make sure they're all oiling properly. So that'll be the next step.